In this video, you are going to learn how to make a circle packing algorithm. What this means is you're going to be able to put a bunch of circles down in a way that they do not intersect and they're all contained in some kind of bounding box. Uh, let's get into it. So uh, in Blender, make sure you have the new build 3.5 alpha or above. Go to Geo Nodes and make a Geometry Nodes group. We're going to be utilizing simulation nodes to do this. So uh, let's add a simulation input, a simulation output, and if you're not familiar with these, uh, basically simulation nodes are a loop that iterates over frames. So each frame, we can add a circle that checks, are we intersecting with another circle? If so, don't place it, otherwise place it. So we iterate. Uh, what I'm going to do is for each simulation, for each iteration, what we're going to do is we are going to add, in other words, we are going to join in our previous input with a new point. And again, if it satisfies certain conditions, add it, otherwise don't. Um, for these points, we need to evenly distribute them throughout the circle, the unit circle. Uh, so I need to somehow say, uh, pick a random position. Uh, to do this, we, there's a couple ways to do it, but I think the kind of cleverest and the fastest is we are going to use a sine and a cosine. And you're thinking, what is the point of this? Uh, what I can do is I can randomize for each of these, I can randomize an angle. So something between 0 and 2 pi, something between 0 and 360 degrees in radians. Uh, give this the sine and the cosine. So pick a random angle, right? And after picking a random angle, uh, what I want to do is pick a random magnitude. How far away are we from the center point? Uh, these two things perfectly describe a point in the circle. So I'm going to combine these uh, into a vector, and then I'm going to take a vector math, and I'm going to scale it by again, a random value going from zero to one. So again, we pick a random angle and then we say extend that, extend that or project it outwards by a random magnitude between zero and one. Um, if I connect this and set the ID to be different for every frame uh, that we um, add this, so I'm gonna use a frame here, a frame here and set different seeds, you're going to see we get a bunch of points that are going to be distributed uh, within this circle because it has a random angle and magnitude um, so there you go. Uh, now what we need to do is say put these points in a very specific way uh, so that uh, none of them would intersect if we gave them a circle. So uh, first of all, before we do that, I think we should give it a circle uh, just so we can see what we're talking about. So I'm going to instance on points. So we have a bunch of points and for each of these we inherit a mesh circle. Okay, and you can see now, each uh, point gives a circle, uh, but they intersect, um, and they all have the same radius. So we need to somehow say, uh, find the radius that the circle should be uh, that it doesn't pack and intersect. Uh, here's a clever way to do that. What we can do is we can take all the points that have been brought from a previous iteration, and I want to know two things about them. One, I want to know where they are, so we can detect, are we in the same area? I want to know where they are. And second of all, I want to know how big or what radius the circle they inherit has. So uh, what we can do is we can make one of these a vector. We are looking at the position. Well, let me try that again. We are looking at the position of all the inherited points. And I also want to look at the point radius of all the inherited points. And I want to say uh, for each new point, like let's say we have one here, uh, find the nearest uh, point uh, that's already generated, and also tell me the radius that the circle should be that they don't intersect. And what that's going to end up being, uh, the math uh, equation, is it's going to be the distance between these two points minus, minus this radius, because that leaves this section over here. Okay? In other words, what we can do is we can look at the position of all the points, and we can compare them. So I can say vector math, uh, give me the distance, so I'm going to say distance, I'm going to find distance uh, between every single point and our randomized position. So I'm saying for each new position, uh, look at the distance from all the points and then subtract away, subtract away the radius, um, which we already have here. Uh, you might think this doesn't actually account for anything because, yes, it gives us the equation for how big the new circle should be, but it doesn't tell us whether or not it's in a circle. Uh, but think about it. If a point is outside the circle, it's fine. If it's inside the circle, right? Uh, we have the distance, and then we subtract away the radius. It gives us a negative number. 
If I clamp this, in other words, saying take all negative numbers and make them zero, uh, circles that intersect are going to spawn with the radius of zero. In other words, they are going to be invisible. So uh, if I now set uh, radius, and you want to make sure you're setting point radius, not curve radius, and set it to this, let's see what we get. Uh, don't expect anything to work yet. We're going to get the same thing. Why? Uh, because we've set the point radii, uh, but it's not actually using these when it's instancing the circle. Uh, so for the scale, what I want to do is I want to say, look at the radius. And let's see what this gives us now. Okay, so it gives us something close, uh, but you can see that, again, all the points are kind of, like, centered and they don't really make sense. This is because, again, we're evaluating the distance minus radius function for every single point. Uh, what I want to say is find the closest point, right? Uh, only do this evaluation uh, one time. Uh, so what I can do is I take this function that, again, sets the radius and makes everything work, allegedly, and I'm going to run this through an attribute statistic. So... I'm going to run this through a statistic looking at all the points that we have before as the geometry. The attribute is going to be this new radius, and I take minimum and connect it to the radius right here. So let's see what this does. Whoops. Let's play that again. Very dramatic. Uh, you can see uh, what it does is it's going to give us new points with radii that fit the condition that we're talking about. So there's actually a lot of points here that we don't see. Um, I don't even know if we can see them through a wireframe, but uh, there's a lot of points with the radius uh, zero. And it's only going to add a new point if uh, the radius is larger than zero, or at least it's only going to be visible. Uh, one way to see this a bit faster, by the way, is you take the frame rate, you crank it up to something crazy. So let's say a frame rate of 500, whatever Blender can handle. Because again, this is going to take time to compute the iterations until we have a, a serial loop, right? I'm going to make a lot of frames, and now it's playing this at a very high frame rate, and it's calculating uh, where the circles should be uh, packed. So that is a circle packing algorithm. By the way, if you want this to be filled in, uh, you can use ngon, and uh, I don't want to see the wireframe. So there you go. You now know how to make a circle packing algorithm. Uh, if you want to get the blend file and not make this yourself, uh, and you just want to download it, you can click the link in the description for the Patreon where that is available and hundreds of blend files over the last three years that I've uploaded are available. Uh, check it out. Patreon is the best way to support this channel. I thank everybody, all 600 to 700 of you uh, that are there. And other than that, that is the tutorial. Thank you for watching.